Please be seated. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 21. These people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. He said, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. This morning, I am speaking briefly on the subject living for God. Living for God. I know I've preached around this subject before, but this is the 2016 version of it. There are many who are who are alive today and they live the way they want because they totally misunderstand life. They totally misunderstand why they are alive. They totally misunderstand why they are on earth. The question, why on earth am I here? Or why am I here on earth? It's a question that must be asked consistently. Where am I coming from? And where am I going? Because if we don't understand our origin, we can never understand our destiny. If you don't know where you are coming from, you will, be, you will never be able to know where you are going to. My dear brethren, we are on earth to live for God for two reasons. First reason was in Isaiah 43, 21, where we read. He said, these people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Number one reason, God formed us. For himself in order for us to live for him. Nobody gets a thing for himself and then the thing decides what to do with itself. God formed us for himself in order for us to live for him. Secondly, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and in verse 15. The Bible said, and he died for all. That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. But unto him which died for them. And rose again. So, number two, Jesus died for us so we can live for God. He died for us so we can live for him. Second Corinthians 5.15 That he died for us. That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again. If he died for me, I am to live for him. It's not, it's, 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 it's not correct for him to die for me and then I live for me. The question is, what does it mean to live for God? Number one. It means, number one, living a life that is centered on God. Living a life that is centered on God. 
living a life that revolves around God. That's why we are on earth. Living a life that revolves around God. Not living for self. Not living for money. And not living at random. Not knowing where you are going in life. Living a life that centers around God. A life where the devil knows, God knows, your friends know, your enemies know that you are sold out to God. Is God speaking to someone here at all? Where you live a life and your friends don't know, your enemies don't know that you are, your, your life is centered around God, it amounts to self-deception. Your decisions are fueled by your considerations for God. Your actions are sponsored by your considerations for God. You don't do things for the same reason why people do them. You do things in, in your consideration of your relationship with God. You can't even accept a job just because it is paying high money. Your consideration for God and your relationship with God is your number one consideration in life. What does it mean to live for God? It means living a life that is centered on him. Number two, it is living by his principles and precepts. Living by the principles and the precepts of God. Living by his principles and precepts. Living by his principles and precepts. Or living by his principles and dictates. Not by the principles and the dictates of the world. The world does not dictate to you how to live. How to talk. How to make money. How to dress. God dictates to you. You live by the di- principles and the dictates of God. You run at his word. Living for God. Living for God. Living for God. Is living according to God's ways of doing things. Not according to the worldly ways of doing things. Number three. What does it mean to live for God? It means living to bring honor and glory to his name. Living to bring honor and glory to his name. Not living to bring reproach and disgrace to his name. Living to bring honor and glory to the name of God. It means you live your life to such a point... We have friends, people who know you can can say God is real. They can say there are still genuine Christians on earth. They can say if this is how Christianity is, I want to be like this. There are people who say, I don't want that person's kind of Christianity. Because we still lie together and cheat together. But I want this kind of person's lifestyle. A life that brings honor, that brings glory to the name of God. And how terrible it is for somebody to claim to be going to church and your life is insulting God all the time. Or the unbelievers are insulting God, insulting church, insulting pastors because of your lifestyle. Number four, what does it mean to live for God? It means living with kingdom character and lifestyle. Living with kingdom character and lifestyle. Kingdom character and lifestyle. Not living according to worldly character and lifestyle. Living according to kingdom character and lifestyle. A life and a character that is practically different from that of the world. No, we live in a world today when the difference between the world and the church no longer exists. Am I communicating? It doesn't exist. 
Where it exists is very few. Please sit down. That's the kind of world we live. And that is the reality of the matter. Where the difference between those who serve God and those who serve God not, you can't find. In Malachi chapter 3 and in verse 17, the Bible said, you shall return, he said, and they shall be mine. Say the Lord in the, of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spared his own son that served him, verse 18, then shall he return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. And between him that served God and him that served him not. You, you return and differentiate. But we live in days where there is no differentiation. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I have seen Christian people come to church lie worse than unbelievers. Once it is in the attempt to make money, they lie. I saw somebody lying and swearing on the lie. Child of God. Take your sin. No differentiation. People come late to work and write a wrong, a wrong time on the work. Unbelievers wrote it. Believers wrote it as well. People are selling products where they are selling. They are mixing kerosene and petrol, or mixing rebagging cement and so on. Christians are doing it. Unbelievers are doing it at the same time. That is why when you say follow me to church, they are laughing at you. To which church? You should follow them to their shrine. That, that's what they think. Which church am I following you to? To do what? Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Am I communicating at all? No difference. Christians are lying to get visa. Unbelievers are lying. They go abroad and lie that they are married and everybody's just the same. In the late 70s, early 80s, in the 70s and early 80s, you don't need anybody to tell you this is a Christian. You don't need anybody. There is, a, there is a corruption and a generational degeneration that has happened to the world and is happening in the church. You don't need anybody to tell you this is a believer. You don't need an advertisement. When you look at their face, there is something that hits you. There is a radiance of glory. There is an aroma, a perfume, an aura. You can't even approach them with, with, with temptation or bribery and so on. You can't. What to, the, the face they will look at you, you can't try it. Take your seat. In those days, nobody told you how to dress. You had the Holy Ghost, you knew you cannot dress naked. You knew you cannot press your chest and press your back and press everywhere. Huh? Now the pressure is coming from even those who are meant to be ministering. Who are we deceiving and where are we going at the end of the journey? Take your seat. You see, the, 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 the thing is so terrible that even when you call somebody and say, the way you are dressing is not looking, you say, how? This is not okay. It's a mental perversion. It's a corruption of, of, of a generation to a point where evil looks good and good looks evil. Am I not okay? What, what happened? What, what is wrong with this? <laughs> Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. You understand what I'm talking about? Nothing is wrong because there is a mentality in which, in which, in which the, 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 the world has so corrupted the church and vice versa. But whenever you see a person living for God, he wakes up with the morning. Am I representing God like this? The other day I was preaching on Sunday morning and somebody sat there with chairs open and sitting and looking like this. It, everything on the chairs poured out. What do you come to church for? Satan sent you. You understand what I'm saying? In those days, even if somebody sat like this, you couldn't see anything here. Because everything was up to the neck here. <laughs> huh? Even if somebody sat like this, everything was up to the neck here. Huh? It was like Reverend Sister Dress. Now, 
worldly, worldly tailors are, dis- are prescribing how people should dress and the church is running with it. You understand what I'm saying? It's time to wake up. Who are, what are we living for? Who are we living for? What is the purpose of your life? What is the purpose of your dressing? What is the purpose of your money making? At the end of it all, where do you want to end? Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Are you following what I'm saying here today? Living for God means living. Living. With kingdom character and lifestyle. In word, in speech, in dress, in appearance, in everything. People can look at you. And they can say, this is a child of God. Number five, living for God is living on assignment for him. On assignment. On assignment. I am living for God. Paul the apostle said, for to me to live is Christ. To die is good. It's living on assignment for God. Living on assignment. For, uh, living on kingdom assignment. What assignment? Assignment for the kingdom. Soul winning assignment. Kingdom expansion assignment. Kingdom service assignment. You just want to, you just want to finish yourself. You don't, you don't even, when God encountered Paul the apostle on the road to Damascus, first thing Paul asks is, what would you want me to do, Lord? What do you want from me? Every genuine encounter makes a man want to spend himself for God. Every genuine encounter with God. I remember the, when I rededicated my life to Christ, this year it will be 30 years, 12th of May, in the high institution. The first fellowship I went to was a campus fellowship. And I had come and arranged the chairs in the, in, in, in the fellowship, cleaned the chairs, and then stood outside as an usher, welcoming people in, in, into the fellowship. That was my first time there. And people will be wondering, where did this one come from? I wanted to do everything for God. I wanted to run. I didn't know what, what to do with myself. Do you understand what I'm talking about? What will you have me do? Take your seat. In those days, you didn't feel like you are complete until you carry tracks in your pocket. In those days, you will purposely enter bus, not that you are going anywhere, because you want to preach inside. Bus preaching, morning cry, and all those kind of things. Those are all disappeared now. There are Christians in church for 10 years. Nobody has ever repented because of them. Nobody ever, there is not one person they can point to in church that this person came to God because of me. All is receive, amen. More money, amen. And all that is, is, is alright. God will give us the money. We are not poor. But if that is all that we are looking for, it is a waste of life. In what way has the kingdom of God expanded because of your life? How many people are escaping hell for heaven because of you? How did the church become larger because you are there? There are those who are just bench warmers occupying space. Or at, at, at best, enjoying what presence, enjoy worship. Take me to that place, the place you are. The secret place. Excellent. By the time you finished singing that and you went back home, you saw your neighbor smoking and you left him. You saw him drinking, you left him. You saw your neighbor going out as a prostitute in the night and you know the, the work she's going to do. You left her. Next day you came back to church, you continued singing and continued worshiping and continued clapping at testimonies. While the world gallops to an ungodly eternity. Paul said, for to me to live is Christ. I refuse to live for myself. I refuse to live for my own assignment. I cannot be there and people are wasting away and I'm watching. When was the last time somebody's life changed because you are involved? Take your seat. Beloved brothers and sisters, I want us to come to this point where we are truly genuinely living for God. We wake up in the morning. 
99% of all we do is about us. More money coming, more appointment, this and that. You slept in the night, ate food, slept, woke up the next month. One whole week you lived for yourself. 30 days for yourself. One year had passed. For yourself you lived. And the more we pursue the things, the more the things are running away. You are unable to pinpoint that these are the things I am doing for God and doing for the kingdom. These are the practical, tangible results. Unable to point them. I'm speaking to somebody here. I'm speaking to somebody watching via the satellite and the internet because God is set to change your life and change your story. And he said, let's stop revolving around in cycles. Let's begin to live for what really matters. A day is going to come, this cloth will will rot. A day is going to come, all the tall skyscrapers in this world will disappear. A day is going to come, the fire will melt everything we are pursuing. The only thing that will remain is the investments we made for eternity. The only deposits we made into eternity. Those are the only things that will remain. When your bank account no longer counts. When your beautiful body is rotting in the ground. When all the fine clothes and the fine cars are all perishing. Huh? When the body that we invested in at the expense of our spirit is no longer there. Because we could stand for three hours investing in the body. We can do one hairstyle for six hours. But we cannot pray for 30 minutes. Like the man was testifying, we can watch one movie for six hours. Part one, part two. But we cannot study the Bible for one hour. Do you understand what I'm saying? A priority inversion. And God is saying, I am watching you. By the end of your journey, let me see where you invested your life. Where you invested your time. Where you invested your energy. Where you invested your resources. Beloved, I see God calling us at this moment. And he's saying, enough is enough of living for the flesh. Living for money. Living for things that have no future. Enough is enough of living for all those things that will end us with regret. It is time to live for God. It is time to live for the kingdom. It is time to live for that which really matters. It is time to live for that which will make other things easy for us. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. What does it mean to live for God? And I go to the final point, which is point number six. It is living now, living for God, like I said, is living on his assignment. That was number five. Soul winning assignment. Kingdom expansion assignment. You are right inside the church serving. Your money is serving God. Kingdom investment. There are those who have never moved one day. When they say, give to this kind of cause, church building is going on, evangelism, is, they will never shake. Hundreds of thousands can be spent on other things, but not for God. What left my pocket last year? into the kingdom of God last year. If I am to eat, if I, if, if I am to use that money to eat, only eating myself and my family, it may last for over 20 years. All of it went into the kingdom. I won't mention the amount. When my wife showed me my last year's income and showed what left it, left me into the kingdom, I felt excited. If I say 20 years, is an understatement. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I felt happy that this can, can leave me into God in one year. There are those, the, their major investment is into their own lives. Alright? So, so we are talking about serving kingdom service. Living on assignment for him. And, and finally, it is living with eternity in view. What does it mean to live for God? It is to live with eternity in view. Living with, with eternity consciousness. Living with the end in view. The end of the journey. The end of the road. Eternity in view. Living and knowing that life does not end here. That there is life in the afterlife. There is life in the afterlife. The songwriter wrote, fading away like the stars of the morning. Losing their light in the glorious sun. Thus must we pass from this earth and its toiling. 
only remembered for what we have done. There are those who live as if this world will not end. Am I communicating? The way they live is as if they won't, they, they won't die. They live as if nothing will end. They will lie to get money, cheat to get money, kill to get money. Lie, cheat, kill to get into power. Oh. There is an end. There is an end. There is an end. Ask Herod, ask Nebuchadnezzar. Ask Tiglath-Pilnesar. Ask the rich man. There is an end. Ask, ask all the big rich people in our generation that they came and passed. There is an end. There is an end. There is an end. Life is terminal. This earthly life is terminal. And it is living with eternity in, in mind that puts everything in perspective. It makes you to live correct. Knowing fully well that you are accountable for everything you are, you are doing with your life. Everything you are doing with your time, with your money, with your resources. Everything you are doing, you are accountable one day. There are people who have come to the point where there is no conscience at all. Nothing convinces them. They can do anything without, without conscience. But living for God is living with eternity in view. Living, knowing that there is an eternal heaven and there is an eternal hell. You see, truth of the matter is, hell and heaven are not major contents of talks that we have talked to each other these days. But there is a literal burning lake of fire that everyone who walks carelessly will live forever for eternity. Anybody you know who, di- who didn't live right, who died yesterday, is there now. One of our friends is a bishop. He got, gave his life to Christ. Please take your seat. About 30 something, 30 something years ago. We were talking yesterday night. And he had an encounter where he passed on as an unbeliever. Heading towards eternity. Before he returned back and gave his life to Christ. He was a bad boy. Indian hemp, everything. Before he gave his life to Christ. At that time, we were coming up and following the Lord then. Last year, towards the end of the year, we met and we were talking. And he said, Anybody who ever claims that he has died and has ever gone to the other side, you say, don't believe their story if they don't tell you one thing. And what is that? He said, the very first thing anybody encounters by the time he steps out of his body and is going towards eternity in hell, you say, is undescribable regret. Say unbelievable, irrecoverable regret. You say you just land and say, What am I going in this direction? Oh, I wish I had one more second to reverse and redo everything. You say that is number one. That before you ever see any flame or anything, eternity of regrets. How I wish, what did it benefit me to live wrong now? Why, why now? Why did I watch myself until I have ended here now? And it's regret forever. And there is a literal heaven, a literal hell. Don't let anybody preach you away out of it. Don't let anybody say if you are saved, you remain saved. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Beloved brothers and sisters, we, people who live for God, they live with this consciousness. There is a heaven. There is a hell. I am not planning to go to hell, so I must adjust my life. I am going to go to heaven, so I must, I must live well. It is living with eternity in view. And that is what puts all of life in perspective. What does it profit us? We gave a testimony and God really answered a prophetic word. You got miracle in nine zeros, eight zeros, six zeros. And then at the end, you ended in hell. 
Praise the Lord. I've been trusting God to be married for 20 years. All my sisters, none him is married. Now, God has made it. We got married. Everyone, the same day, we all married. Then you lived carelessly and ended in hell with your testimony. What a useless testimony. Huh? Oh, praise the Lord. I was trusting God for fruit of the womb for 25 years. Praise the Lord. The yoke has been broken. God gave me triplets. And then at the end of your life, you are headed for hell. Your triplets are headed for heaven. What does the prophet, what kind of useless miracle is that? Praise the Lord. I've been on wheelchair for 15 years. And in one service, power hit me. I walked out of the wheelchair. And then at the end, you walked into hell with your legs. It's a useless miracle. It's a waste of miracle. Is God speaking to somebody here? Take your seat. As we round up this morning, question to ask is, what am I really living for? Who am I really living for? What is my life revolving around? What is my life centering around? What am I, what is this life all about? What is the high point of life for me? What am I really, really living for? It's a question. And I can assure you two things. If you live for God, Number one, you live for good. Take your seat. You live for good. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. The good things of life shall be added to you. If you live for God, you have decided to live for good. It is the lie of the devil that says that to seek God means to end in in, in suffering and frustration and penury. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Let your heart beat after God and God will cause the things of the world to beat their parts in in looking for you. Magnify him and you magnetize the things of this life without you struggling to get it like others do. Without killing and bribing to get get, get them. Live for God and you have decided to live for good. Make God the center of attraction or the center of attention in your life. And God makes you the center of attraction in your world. Let God become the center of your life. And your life becomes the center of attraction. For the things that others are dying to get. Make God the center of attention. And then. Live for God. Number two. And escape the torments of hell forever. Live for God and escape the torment of hell forever. Live for God and escape the torment of eternal hell. Live for God and escape an eternity of regrets, an eternity of damnation, an eternity of pain, an eternity of hurt. This morning, I've come to speak to you from the passion of my heart and not with any mind of condemnation or anything like that. But just that. Let's counsel and reason with each other. You you didn't miss church one day and you ended in the same hell with those who never went to church one day. What a waste of life. What a waste of life. You didn't miss church one day. You were there all the time. And those who killed everybody, killed as many people as they could kill, you still found yourself where they found themselves. That that is the kind of deception the devil wants to put a lot of people. To palliate your conscience, at least I'm going to church. And you're not living well. And you're not living right. And then you have never killed a person before. You have never committed an abortion before. And you found yourself with the mother harlots of the earth. The drug barons of the world. God forbid. Stand up on your feet. Lift up your hands. Oh, to be like thee. Oh, to be like thee. Blessed Redeemer. Pure as thou art. Come in thy fullness.
come in thy sweetness, stamp thy own image deep in my heart. Oh, oh, to be like thee, oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer. The world. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy truth, and stop your own image deep in singing dream of times. Oh, to be like me. and speak to God. Lord, I cannot afford to live for myself. I cannot afford to live for myself. Lord, I am sorry if I have lived any kind of life that was not pleasing to you. I am sorry.
and just let God know Lord I am sorry for living solely for myself I'm sorry for not living to please you as I should I am sorry for not living with eternity in view I am sorry for not living to bring you glory with, with my life I am sorry for not living by your principles and dictates I am sorry for not living a life that is centered on you I am sorry speak to God song is on. Everywhere you are in the crowd, main sanctuary galleries overflows. You pick your Bibles and bars and you come forward here to say, Pastor, that message was for me. I want to make it right with God. I don't want to pretend I can't deceive myself. You may be a pastor, you may be a leader, you may be a, a worker. But I like you. And don't do it sluggishly. You pick up your Bible and your bags and quickly rush home. Be on your way. Forward, forward. Don't let any devil deceive you at this time. Pick your Bibles and your bags from the main sanctuary. Don't say I have been going to church. Church can you. Don't say I've been going to church. No, have you been living for God? Have you been living right? I saw the majority of people coming out this morning. Don't remain there. My song every day. Carry your Bible from the back, from the galleries, from the main sanctuary, from the overflow. Quickly step on it.
Jacob became Israel in the presence of God. You are here today. There is a bondage that is overcoming you. An addiction to alcohol, to tobacco, to pornography, to immorality. An addiction. A, a spirit of lie. You have lied before you had it in mind to tell the truth. Something cheating. You are money. Something is wrong. Please don't let this message stand against you. Rush forward now in that category and be helped of God. Say, Pastor, I am struggling to live right. It's not that I'm a bad person, but I want to live for God. But I'm struggling with, with a lot of temptations. I'm struggling. I rise, I fall, I rise, I fall. Please, I need help. Rush forward quickly. 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 Pick your Bibles and your bags from the galleries, from the overflows. There are even people here with things like smoke, tobacco and cigarette and so on. Quickly rush forward. I am bound. I am bound. I am bound in sin. I am bound in, in unrighteousness. I am bound in ungodliness. And I don't want to live here that, that way. I want the mercy of God. I can't help myself. I want help from God. I am dying, O oh Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. Oh Lord, but I long to rise in your arms of faith, and be close. To be draw me near a love, draw me near, draw me near a near a love, near a blessing to the cross. Keep on coming, keep on coming. Consecrate me, now, Lord. Consecrate me, Lord. To Thy service, Lord. By the power of Thy Oh, yes, I feel You touch with a special Draw me, draw me, draw me, dear Lord. Dear Lord, dear Lord, dear Lord,
lift up your hands i give a final call everybody again please remain standing in the congregation you are a christian already born again but you have backslid or your spiritual life is down you say i'm already born again but the way you are now you can easily go to hell if the rapture should take place now pick your bibles and bars and say pastor i want to rededicate my life to christ i have done what they are doing now before but now i want to rededicate my life to christ carry your bibles and bags and run forward quickly lord prepare me a sanctuary you're an holy by the truth we thanks give of the olive sanctuary chest everyone lift up the other hand including those in the congregation say he that thinketh is standard should take heed as he falls place your right hand on your, on your chest and lift up the other hand and you are going to speak your heart to God Lord I want to live for you I want to live for you I want to live for you empower me to live for you deliver me from all the traps of, 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 of temptation all the traps of life all the traps deliver me from the traps deliver me from the snares of the enemy deliver me from the snares of hell and grace me to live for you Lord to live for you Lord
que hasta que Ali Fadiza Le Kawat Me A Holy Spirit I will obey Ali Fadiza Me A Place your right hand on your chest and lift up the other hand. Father, we come before you today to ask for the grace to live for you. The grace to live free of sin. The grace to live a life that is centered around you. The grace to live a life that brings honor and glory to you in lifestyle and character. The grace to live by your principles and your precepts and your dictates for our lives. The grace to live by kingdom character, not worldly character. The grace, Lord, to live on assignment for the kingdom. The grace to live with eternity in view. To know that there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Father, this grace I ask upon your people in the name of Jesus. I take authority over every bondage of life, bondage of lying, bondage of stealing, bondage of cheating, bondage of smoking, of drinking, bondage of bitterness, bondage of pride, bondage of arrogance, bondage of immorality, bondage of addiction, every bondage of witchcraft, every form of bondage that is trying to take you to hell by the reason of the anointing. It is broken! It is broken! It is broken! In Jesus' name! The grace to live for God is released upon you now. It will be easy to say no to sin. It will be easy to say no to the devil. It will be easy to say no to unrighteousness. It will be easy to stand in the midst of compromise. In Jesus' name! Until I hear well done Until I hear well done I will never, never stop my journey Halfway, halfway Until I hear well done 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 I can never, never stop my journey halfway Halfway Until I hear well done Until I reach heaven Until I reach heaven Until I reach heaven Until I reach heaven, I reach heaven. I will never, never, never stop my journey halfway. Halfway. Until I reach heaven. Two more times. Until I reach heaven.
Everybody remain standing on your feet. Before we, I release them, let me just pray for the sick and the afflicted. Every one of you here, our ministers are going to talk to you. And I want, I want the counselors and the Dunamis Home Church and the intercessors to join concert in the establishment of these souls. I know some of you are dedicating your lives, but it's all right. But at the end of the sixth service on Sunday, I would like to see you, both for a presentation and for a prayer, and also for your establishment in the Lord. We want to do everything possible at the end of the sixth service. They will let you know when that sixth service would be. I look forward to seeing you. Please, I want 100% of you to be there in that service. God bless you in Jesus' name. Everybody remains standing. He says, Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and other things shall be added unto you. Lift up your hands and ask God for anything that you want him to do in your life, any other thing. Lord, I have made you the center of my life. I need to be married. I need to have the fruit of the womb. I need to get a job this January. I need my body to be healed. I need to be free from this cancer. I need to be free from this poverty. I need to be free from this or that. Open your mouth and speak to God. What you need to be free from. What you need, to, you need him to save you from. Shepherd of my soul. 